Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. Yesterday, as we continued with our journey through the Acts of the Apostles, we saw that Paul became centre stage, almost taking over from where Peter left off. And uh, we saw that Paul and Barnabas were commissioned, sent out by the believers in Antioch, and uh, they went off on their first mission. And you made the point, just as we were finishing yesterday's programme, that Paul would always address the Jewish community before addressing the Gentile community. And uh, there was a very good reason for that. He always wanted to give opportunity to those who were God's old covenant people to become part of the new covenant. Uh, remember, the church had up to this time been very, very Jewish in, in nature and uh, in personnel. And so this is the opening up of the church to become both Jew and Gentile. And of course, many of Paul's letters reflect this, where he is, he is uh, seeking to bring the two together into a unity. Uh, we must remember that that uh, people were being saved from two completely different backgrounds. Um, the the Jewish people and the Gentiles, of course, had n- never had much to do with one another before Paul really started his evangelism. Uh, and um, they were like two completely separate communities. So the the idea of bringing them together to worship was almost unthinkable. I mean, there were a few Gentiles that had been converted to Judaism that would have been in the synagogues, but very, very few. Now you are seeing the emerging of a church that was to be both Jewish and Gentile. Now the Jews were coming out of a very strict religious and legalistic background. The Gentiles were coming out of a very free, libertine, uh, pagan background where um, their worship in the pagan temples often included such things as ritual prostitution and things like this, which were sort of very much feeding the flesh. Totally, this sort of libertine lifestyle was totally the opposite to the legalistic thinking of of the early Jews. Uh, so uh, it was going to take a mighty, a a miraculous work of God to bring people from these two completely different backgrounds into a unity in Christ where they would literally become brothers and sisters together in the family of God. And so Paul would have to address these two uh, communities often differently. I mean, he would go to the synagogue where he would talk to the Jews and whatever Gentiles happened to be there. But then, of course, before long, he was out in the marketplace. He was out where the general people were, where the Gentiles were, and he was preaching the gospel there and seeking then to establish a new church, which was both Jewish and Gentile in its makeup. But when he goes to the Jews... He does what we saw yesterday, and he puts the gospel into its context. He wants the Jewish people to understand that Jesus is the fulfillment of the promises that were made to the prophets, that he was the long-expected Messiah, that he was the one who was born in the lineage of David, that he is the one who is sitting on the throne of David, meaning uh, that he is the Messiah who's going to reign uh, for all eternity. And so after um, talking about the, if you like, the Jewish roots that go back into the Old Testament, then he starts to proclaim uh, how Jesus was sent to be the Savior by the Father and what happened to him. Uh, Let me read some more from chapter 13. The people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus, yet in condemning him they fulfilled the words of the prophets that are read every Sabbath. Though they found no proper ground for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. 
When they had carried out all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he was seen by those who had traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to our people. Then Paul goes on, you see, having set Jesus in his historic context, and he begins to preach. We tell you the good news. What God promised our fathers, he has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second psalm, you are my son, today I have become your father. The fact that God raised him from the dead never to decay is stated in these words, I will give you the holy and sure blessings promised to David. So it is stated elsewhere, you will not let your holy one see decay. Now can you see what Paul is doing? He is quoting the scriptures. You see, he, the, all good preaching quotes the scriptures. The scriptures for him and for the people uh, in Antioch at that time were, um, wherever Paul went, um, the scriptures were, of course, the Old Testament scriptures. So he is looking back to the Old Testament to see that there are all these prophecies that predict the ministry of Jesus and his significance. And so he, he uh, concludes, Therefore, my brothers, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is justified. That means put right with God, made acceptable to God. Uh, that everyone who believes is justified from everything you could not be justified from by the law of Moses. Now he's beginning to contrast the new with the old. The law told you what to do, but couldn't enable you to do it. The law could only point out to you how guilty you were in not fulfilling all the commandments that God had given you. But now Jesus has come with the message of forgiveness, that he is willing to forgive all your sins. He's made that possible through, through the cross. And by the forgiveness of your sins, uh, to put you into right relationship with God. And then, of course... Uh, he would go on to make clear to them that uh, the Holy Spirit that was given to all those who believe would come upon them to enable them now to live the new life, uh, to live in the good of the new life that Jesus had given. Remember, Jesus said, I have come that men may have life and have it in all its fullness. So what was impossible under the law, that is to live a life that is pleasing to God, becomes possible for all those who believe in Jesus, get born again, become a new creation in whom the Spirit of God lives. Because you remember that one of the prophecies that was made concerning what would happen when uh, the new covenant was established was that God would write his law on the hearts of his people and he would cause them to walk in his ways. So this was the great liberating thing that Paul was preaching to the Jewish believers. You have been trying to please God by the way you've lived and observed the law and you haven't made it, have you? All you feel is that you're a failure for being able to live up to the standards that God requires. But now I have got good news that through faith in Jesus you can be forgiven for all your sins. By faith in Jesus you can receive a new life. By faith in Jesus the power of the Holy Spirit can come upon you so that now you are empowered to live the way that will be pleasing to God to fulfill his plan and his purpose. They were pleased to hear that. They invited him to come back the next Sabbath. Yes, and uh, it, it's interesting to say that all, all, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. This had really stirred everybody up. And when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy, the Jewish leaders, you see. Now, that's exactly what had happened with the Pharisees and Jesus. And so they talked abusively against what Paul was saying. So now you see the kind of conflict that the Jews were put under. This is not the Gentiles. This is addressing the Jewish situation. Uh, and the conflict that they were put under was by their, their own leaders wanting to hold on to the traditions. Remember, Jesus said, uh, that you hold on to your traditions and thus you nullify the word of God. Uh, whereas Paul is preaching liberation from the bondage of religious legalism, of a sense of failure, of never living up to God's standards, 
Uh, he is offering a new life, a new beginning, forgiveness, acceptance by God, knowing that you stand in a right relationship with God, that you stand in his favor, in his grace, and that the power of the Holy Spirit is given to you, that God will come to live within you by the power of his Spirit to enable you to live in the way that will be pleasing to him. And he was preaching this liberation, and their own leaders were trying to keep them in restriction, in bondage. Doesn't the same thing happen today so often? I mean, so often I've seen denominational leaders afraid of the liberty and freedom of the Holy Spirit, just trying to convince people all they have to do is just go on being good de denominational church people, um, and yet there's no signs of life or vitality of joy or power about the ministry in such churches. So the same problems that were being confronted then are really still around to be confronted today, even though the context uh, was, was very, very different. But Paul and Barnabas answer these leaders boldly. We had to speak the word of God to you first. But since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles, for this is what the Lord has commanded you commanded us, I have made you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, because they, of course, would have been among this big crowd that gathered to hear what Paul was saying, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord, and all who were appointed for eternal life believed. And this is the difference between those who dishonored the preaching of the gospel and those who honored the word. Those who honored the word received eternal life. They received salvation. They received forgiveness. They received a new life. They were born again. Those who rejected the message were left in their legalistic bondage. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 